the state television company Westerner Media represents the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, weather anomaly in a number of states in Western Armenia. Peace built on destruction of Artsakh's peaceful settlements can be stable and lasting. Foreign Minister of Armenia. Always see chairperson in office, visits Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Armenia. Human Rights Watch considers a number of cases of violence by the Azerbaijani military as a war crime. The Russian armed forces lost 112 people in Syria. Los Angeles declares November 9th commemoration day for victims of Azerbaijan's aggression on Artsakh. Great danger for the fish of Lake Van. Fish migration will be difficult this year. Unusual weather conditions persist in several provinces of western Armenia. The weather surprises in the form of heavy snowfall, especially in the central regions and in Gars province. Schools in Gars have been closed for a day due to the cold. A storm is expected in the coming days. Rescue squads continue snow clearing operations. Heavy snowfall has also been recorded in Van, Mush and Harbert districts. Despite low temperatures in these regions, spring took control in some southern regions. Foreign Minister of Armenia Ara Evazian mentioned the following at the joint press conference with OSCE chairperson in office, Swedish Foreign Minister Anne Lind in Yerevan. Armenia and the Armenian people have always and sincerely addressed the message for peace. As a nation who survived the first genocide of the 20th century, we know the value of peace and security. In all stages of the Karabakh conflict, Armenia has acted exclusively in support of the peaceful settlement. Today, as well, we completely understand the opportunities which peace and real reconciliation could bring to our region. However, peace is not just a nice word. The peace which has been built based on the destruction of the peaceful settlement of Artsakh, including the destruction of Hadrut region, the elimination of the Armenian population, and the creation of Azerbaijani settlements in their place, cannot be stable and lasting. We will continue our fight for fair and dignified peace in close cooperation with our international partners, the Armenian foreign minister said in his remarks. Today, Anne Lind, the OSCE chairperson in office and foreign minister of Sweden, had meetings with Armenia's prime minister Nikol Pashinyan, President Armen Sarkisyan, and foreign minister Ara Ayvazyan in Yerevan. The talks were focused on the Artsakh issue and the OSCE's continued role in the conflict resolution process. Discussions also included the strengthening of the cooperation between the OSCE and Armenia. As OSCE chairperson in office, she stressed the important work of the MIS group and the OSCE personal representative in the process of finding progress and lasting peace. At the same time, Lin stated that unresolved issues remain. The OSCE plays an important role in the process of finding progress. Respect for humanitarian and human rights is important at this stage. It is necessary to create an atmosphere of trust and accessibility on the ground, the minister stressed, noting the role of women. It should be noted that Anne Lin's message is addressed to the Azerbaijani authorities. The OSCE chairperson in office also met with civil society. Within the framework of a regular visit, OSCE chairperson in office Anne Lind had left for Azerbaijan on March 14 and met with President Ilham Aliyev and Foreign Minister Jehun Bayramov. Human Rights Watch has referred to a number of cases of violence against civilians in Artsakh by the Azerbaijani armed forces. The organization has documented several cases of violence in which Armenian civilians have been victims of torture and inhumane treatment. Human Rights Watch reports that two people have died in Azerbaijani captivity. Human Rights Watch reports that the Fourth Geneva Convention provides for the protection of civilians during international armed conflict. The unlawful overdraft of a protected person is a serious breach of the Geneva Convention and a war crime, the report says. Intentional killing and mistreatment of protected people, as found in relation to the aforementioned cases, are war crimes according to international humanitarian law, the report says. The armed forces of Russia have lost 112 people during the military operation in Syria. The first deputy chairman of the State Duma Defense Committee, Andrei Krasov, reported. 112 Russian servicemen have been killed in Syria, he said at a round table in the State Duma on Monday. The head of the Federation Council's Defense and Security Committee and former Russian Air Force chief, Viktor Bondarev, gave the same data in September 2018. Presented by Council Member Paul Krikorian and seconded by Council Member Mitch O'Farrell, the Los Angeles City Council unanimously adopted a resolution reaffirming the support of the City of Los Angeles towards the people of the Republic of Artsakh, Armen Press reports. The resolution notes that the City of Los Angeles has a long record of standing in support and friendship with the people of the Republic of Artsakh. 
On September 27, 2020, Azerbaijan's military forces launched a much more massive unprovoked attack against the Republic of Artsakh, coordinated with and supported by Turkey, utterly shredding the 30-year ceasefire and resuming full-scale warfare targeted at destroying and ethnically cleansing the indigenous Armenian population and conquering by force the territory of the independent Republic of Artsakh stated the resolution. Therefore, be it resolved that by the adoption of this resolution of the city of Los Angeles honors and mourns the thousands of lives lost in this attack and declares November 9, 2020 a day of remembrance and commemoration of the victims of Azerbaijan's aggression against the Republic of Artsakh, states the resolution. The city of Los Angeles does hereby temporarily suspend its friendship city relationship with Shushi for as long as it is illegally controlled by Azerbaijan and will renew that status when Shushi is again free of Azeri conquest and oppression and restored to democratic governance as part of the Republic of Artsakh. Due to global climate change and lowering of water levels in Lake Van and adjacent rivers, the migration of Tarek is expected to be more difficult this year. These fish migrate to freshwater during the breeding season. Lake Van is one of the areas affected by the drought. Low rainfall is affecting the water potential of the basin. The level of Lake Van will have a permanent downward trend. This situation has a negative impact on wildlife. The hot weather has affected the fish. The fish, which were supposed to be at a depth of 70 meters this season, have come near the shore, swimming at a depth of 18 meters. The less water, the harder it will be for the fish to reproduce, because although Tareks live in the soda-rich waters of Lake Van, they only survive when rivers flow into the lake. Now I present you Haberban by Zartonk Ensemble. The full version is available on the official website of Western Armenia TV. This was all for today. Goodbye.